Hey guys, Mark and Fred and Ford. Out on a nightly field trip, going to the Gibson guitar class, learn about some hardware. Stay with me. Yeah, up front and center, uh, got a call from the store. They've got a standard in this burst right here on the right. But gosh, take a look at these SGs. Oh my. These are some brand new colors. I've never seen any SGs like this. Of course, we're all used to those SGs. But look at the paint jobs on these. Wow. Delightful looking. <laughs> what a breath of fresh air. Stay with me, you guys. The standard 60s, that's going to pretty much start to add. Pretty much during the 60s, they started going into the, the Grover tuners. So we were talking about how these have the traditional um, Grover uh, machine heads. It is going to be a standard 60s, so the neck profile is a little chunkier. It's not the chunkiest. 50s would be oh, significantly chunkier than this guy. Um, so fairly, not super slim, but fairly standard C-shaped neck on this guy. You are going to have the thumb bleeders with the, with the gold knobs, usually the 490s and the 490Rs. Mm -hmm. um, great pickups, great sound to them. Again, usually with these guys, I like to it's really about the neck profiles with Gibsons, depending on what you want to go with. I like the bound necks. You do got to make sure that they stay in tune. The older style tuners, you're going to have some issues with staying in tune, but it's going to give you that classic look if you want that. Again, if you're going to be playing this out and you want this to be a more of a workhorse, I would suggest um, the regular Grover tuners. Even then, Grover locking tuners would be really great. But again, it's an upgrade if you're willing to do it, if you want to make sure that this is going to be staying in tune the best as possible. Okay. Yeah, the reason, again, like I said, I found my SG and it had Grover locking tuner. So I already had all those kind of appointments to play um, and be set up to play as best as possible. Let's address the uh, SG hardware we're talking about, right? Yeah, okay. So we have the two different SGs. Both of them are limited editions. The green one is, I. When I opened it up, it had that Murphy's Lab uh, brochures to it. So I believe it's a Murphy's Lab custom shop. Uh, can we get up close to it, we can see the difference, maybe? Yeah, again, the standard appointments within the older, uh, I think this is actually the ABR1 bridges. So you see, uh, let me tilt this over. If you zoom in on there, the studs to these are actually drilled into the body. So there are no posts. They're physically drilled into the body more of a traditional building method as opposed to these guys. You see how these are actually on post before? Get up closer, yeah. Oh, that thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the difference between those guys. And yeah, that is a more traditional way of building a Gibson. It goes back to people just being, people being collectors and want it to be as original, feel as original, have the same appointments because they collect them. Gibsons have gotten extremely expensive. Um, and it's just one of those, one of those things. There's a market for it, so Gibson built them. So guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Interesting to learn about the hardware of these Gibson models. Little by little, learning more and more about this Gibson brand. So the search continues. Thanks guys.